What was the most dickish way in which a friend showed you that you're not as close as you thought? Part 5. Kick back and enjoy the ride. If you dig what we do, hit that subscribe button and share the love for Thread Tonic. Account 1. Drove him to job interview after job interview. Took off days from work in order to do so. Gave. Not lent him money to buy some business casual dress wear. He gets the job. Quits three months later. This would have been the ideal job for his knowledge base. Had full benefits. And in five years, he would have been promoted to top dog at a stupidly high salary, making nearly double what I make. His reason for quitting was that his boss was kind of annoying. Helped him when cash was tight, gave him computer equipment, helped him get to college when his car was busted, fixed his car. Helped his mom out with household chores. Helped watch out after his sister, drove and picked him and his mom from the airport at 3 a.m. when their ride never showed. They were family to me. Anywho pulled a scumbag Steve on me. Promised to come over after I spent a week in the hospital. Was scared and just wanted a buddy to have a beer with and chat. Never happened. We rescheduled three times, each time, no call. Then he stopped answering my phone calls. Maybe once every week or so, we had spent nine years hanging out nearly every other day. I sent him an email expressing my hurt that he was a brother to me. Got a reply back? Account two. First timer that's been lurking for a few months. I saw this thread and had to get this off of my chest. My best friend and I had been through hell and back. We've known each other for 25 plus years and have seen each other through the best and worst in each other's lives. I was his best man at his wedding and he at mine. All of the times that he hit rock bottom, I was there without hesitation, without judgment, but with a hand to help him up and a shoulder to lean on. Four years ago, I was injured while on the job. Due to the nature of the injury, I had a lot of pain and some psychological issues as well. I was assaulted by a patient in an ER. About three months into a severe downward spiral, I got extremely suicidal. It scared the absolute shit out of me and got to the point where I didn't want to go into my house for fear that I'd grab my shotgun and use my brains for wallpaper. Not knowing what else to do, I called my friend and asked him to come get my shotgun from me. I explained to him very clearly everything that was going on and he agreed that the gun shouldn't be anywhere near me. He then asked if he could borrow my pickup as he and his wife were moving into a new house. Since I couldn't drive it, I told him to keep it as long as he needed. He came and got the gun, placed it behind the seat of the truck, and headed out. A week later, he brought the truck back. I was still out of work, hadn't seen anyone for days, and was really looking for a few minutes of conversation. He told me he had to split and took off. After he left, I thought to myself, I wonder if he remembered to get the shotgun out of the truck. When I flipped the seat forward, there was my Winchester, along with the boxes of ammo he'd also grabbed. I went immediately to the phone and dialed up my friend to ask why the gun was still in the truck. He laughed. He thought that I wouldn't think to look for the gun. Account 3. Doesn't compare to some of these stories, but I'll certainly never forget it. Near the end of my senior year of high school, my dad was given four free tickets to a Cubs game, and they were really good seats like third base, eighth row up. He then gave me the tickets sort of as a graduation present, so I invited my three oldest friends. The day before, I had them at my house and we went over how we were going to leave at around nine in the morning to get up for the noon game. So the morning came and none of them were answering their phones. I drove over to one person's house and his mom said he was at the other guy's house. Drove there, his mom said he was at the first house. I was so mad that my friends were blowing me off when they knew how excited I was. I immediately drove to a different friend's house and invited him to go on the spot. The day still turned out to be decent since we ended up scalping the other two tickets to some cool guys that bought us beer, and we got pretty drunk off our profits. But I still can't get over the fact my oldest, best friends would do that to me. Account 4. So we used to joke all the time about, friends will help you move, real friends will help you move bodies, and I thought we were at that level. Then one day some shit went down and I called him up and said I needed help moving and he said sure he'd come over. So he gets there and I show him the body I needed to move, another whole story there, and he kind of freaks and says he needs to call the cops. And so, shit, now I have to move two bodies and still have nobody I can call. Account 5. Most of these posts come down to one thing. Everyone you know has a different view of your relationships than you do. Yeah, that hurts but the same is likely true for them. 
How many people consider you to be a great friend, but you barely would acknowledge them? How many people do you sideline? Who would be hurt to learn how little they mean to you? Ultimate rule in life, be nice, man. Be nice. Account six. My roommate and I were very close my first year in graduate school. We started drifting apart when I got involved with my then boyfriend. Roommate was male, I'm female. When it came time for us to move out, I had to attend a conference in Toronto, but he offered to move my already packaged stuff to my boyfriend's. I returned home to find tons of messages from our landlady demanding that I move. He didn't move any of my things, even though he promised to. Additionally, he wrote a nasty letter to her, which he cc'd to me on our apartment door. Basically, I was using him, and he complained about me, despite him promising he'd help me. We haven't spoken since. Account 7. I was best friends with a girl for 10 years. We hung out pretty much every day, were the inseparable twosome, etc., etc. Well, senior year of high school, she meets a guy and we start to drift a bit. She and I had been quite the party types in school, but this guy was uber Christian and was her first boyfriend. So we, understandably, drift from each other. After about a year, I met up with the two of them and his sister at a concert. She introduces me by saying, this is my name. We used to be best friends. Ouch. Account 8. I was home from college and went out with a buddy of mine. We end up meeting two girls at the bar and go back to their place. The girl I was talking to was engaged or something and went to bed. My buddy ended up hooking up with the girl he was with. So some other girl shows up and I end up just BSing with her. Never hooked up with her and ended up sleeping at their place. So fast forward a couple of weeks later, and another friend of mine calls me drunk, thinking I'm someone else, and proceeds to talk shit on me for about five minutes because I never hooked up with that girl. I pretty much came clean and told him that he called the wrong person. The person he had been insulting for the past five minutes. Hung up the phone and haven't talked to him in seven years. Account 9. Good friend from a previous school was transferring to my current school senior year. I made him come with me to social events against his will and included him in my core group of friends. He started to act douchey around me and make snide douchey comments to me that I took as some kind of joke. Apparently they weren't. So one day he invited himself to my house while my mom was out of town and brought three other people and was insisting that we have a party. I said no, I didn't want to fuck up the house and my mom threatened to kick me out if I had another party. He then proceeded to throw a bitch fit and demand that I invite some girls over for a party. He's big, awkward, goofy, and fat. Never met a girl that thought of him as anything more than a friend. I then said no, so he stormed out of the house with the other guys, leaving me. He ignored me for a week, and then the very next weekend, I heard he threw a party at his mom's house and didn't speak one word of it to me, and no one else told me except one of my friends who went. He tried to keep me out of the loop on everything. To this day, I still don't talk to him. He won't even look me in the eye. I recently found out that his friends only hang out with him because he gets them free alcohol, smokes them up for free, and can throw parties at his house. It makes me so happy when I hear what people actually think of him. Account 10. In fourth grade, there was a girl I would hang around with every other day or so, eating lunch and just talking about anything. One day, she invited me to a sleepover at her place. It was a total blast. Her parents took the two of us out to pizza, and we giggled the whole time as we tried passing ice to each other's cups using straws. Then we went back to her place, where we spent all night playing clue board game together. The following Monday, I ran up to her during lunch while she was talking with some other girls from class and told her I had such a great time and was really happy. She pulled me aside and told me never to mention it in front of anyone. She didn't want people to know she was with me. I can still remember how it felt when my heart fell down to my stomach. Account 11. I think I'm going to be the douchey friend. I have three people whom I would call my friends, one of whom is an absolute genius, the other is an amazing singer and pretty damn smart, and the third of whom is one of the best looking guys you'll know and definitely the nicest with a 90 plus average. We're headed to different schools next year and I think I'm going to try and lose touch with them. Redditors to whom this happened. It's probably not because they didn't like you. I love my friends, but when I'm around them, I hate myself so much more because when she casually mentions getting a five on the AP exam, I feel so much more stupid for having a C average. When she bursts into gravity, I just want to leave.
because I know I'll never be able to affect anyone as much as she can with her voice. When we go somewhere together, everyone is always looking at him if they don't know him and saying hi if they do. Most Redditors are great people. I am friends with great people. Being around these great people just teaches me more about how completely subpar I am. Account 12. Though not nearly as grandiose as some of the other posts, but perhaps more relatable, my friend, no longer, was sleeping with my now ex-girlfriend for about the last year of our relationship. When I found out and called him about it, he suggested I read the Bible to find comfort during my time of stress. I can laugh now at how arrogant and misled that advice was, but at the time, considering all that happened, I wanted him to eat that Bible. Account 13. I talked a friend I knew for the last five years out of suicide. A few years later, I fell into depression myself and didn't feel comfortable talking about it with anyone in my family, so I went to him. When I mentioned I had problems, he basically blew me off and called me emo. That day, I realized I really didn't have any friends. I guess I'm on the opposite side of this story and the dick in this case. I met my childhood best friend in second grade and we grew up together. We both had several of the same interests, vivid imaginations, incredible nerds, etc. Simply put, best friends. In high school, my friend, let's call him Tom, started having seizures. After going to the doctor, Tom discovered that he had a brain tumor which needed to be removed surgically. This obviously scared the crap out of me, and to this day I vividly remember sitting on the steps in my parents' house when I heard the news. As a best friend, I tried to be as supportive as possible, and I can honestly say I was in the coming years. More on that in just a bit. Tom went into surgery, and I was there the next day when he woke up. This moment in time, which I wasn't even slightly prepared for, was the most pivotal moment in our relationship. While I saw Tom open his eyes and acknowledge his family and myself around him, it was not my best friend who woke up. As time went on, in many ways, I felt like I didn't even recognize who this person was. A once energetic, spirited, and brilliant human was replaced by a shell of that former person. To be very honest, to this day, I personally feel that my best friend died on that operating table and that I've lost him forever. I do want to note that in no way did I think this was his fault, nor did I blame him. It's just the horribly depressing truth of the situation. High school went on, and we remained best close friends, but as time went on, I felt less and less close. I mean, we remained very close, hung out all the time, but our relationship began to lose all of its substance. We didn't really have any deep conversations or share things with each other. We watched movies, games, etc., but, and I'll use the word substance again, whatever substance constitutes what makes up a best friend was lacking. Years go on, he continued to have seizures and a second round of tumors. Through a variety of treatments, the tumors were gotten rid of, but he still had off and on seizures. As a result of the tumors and treatments, his short-term memory was pretty much shot to hell, which in part made it difficult to have a close relationship with him. Time keeps turning and we go off to college. We kept in touch for sure, but not that much. It was what it was. In my third year of college, and I'll spare all the details, my personal life went to absolute crap as my family imploded and a variety of other things occurred. These events really messed me up and were tearing me apart. It got to the point that after I graduated, I moved several states away to a new city, completely leaving just about everything behind. This is the part where I feel like the cowardly dick. Part of my decision to run away, if you will, was not talking to Tom about it. We both had moved back to our hometown for a bit and such and continued to hang out here and there. However, I didn't mention my plan. My family was aware, but I never really told any of my friends. I basically suddenly just left. Over the years, Tom has reached out to me on numerous occasions, which for the most part I've ignored. I did try calling him back once a year or two ago. However, I got his VM. I didn't return his call back to me. I left because I didn't want to be reminded of what I left behind. And although Tom didn't cause any of my personal problems, he was a reminder nonetheless. I've tried to justify to myself that we had grown apart as we grew up as we were different and the surgery had changed him, etc. But to this day, I feel incredibly, incredibly guilty. At this point, it's not even so much the reminder of what I left but the fact that I feel like such an ass that I can't bear to reach out. So in this case, I'm the dick 
as I never told my childhood best friend that I felt we had grown apart and that his medical condition had changed him. I think he was aware, but regardless, to this day, I ignore all of his attempts to contact me. Sorry, this was such a long post, but I've never really talked about this with anyone before I have bits and pieces, but reading this thread reminded me of how I loathe myself for what I did and do. Count 14. Found out that one of my closest friends at school was in a secret relationship with another friend of ours for a full year. She didn't even tell me about it until she decided to break it off with the guy. Over this whole time, she also made up countless lies, and I basically can't trust a single thing she says anymore. She was a bitch.